sewing friends welcome to my sewing room my name is Beth and if you're new welcome today I wanted to share about an unconventional type quilt that I put together for my son he has some sensory issues he really likes heavy blankets he's very particular about some of his clothing and he loves me to give him quilts so he requested another quilt I don't know what he does with them but they do wear out and I took a recent quilt top that I made here on the channel using this quilt top here. I added some squares and for batting I used a blanket and I did not quilt it in your typical quilting style. So let's get started on how to make this simple, unconventional, heavy quilt. The first thing I did is I found a blanket. I asked my son if, is this blanket heavy enough? He said yes, and so that's when I started. I put that quilt top from a previous video and the info will be down below. I put that on top of the blanket. Those some fabrics that kind of coordinate with my small quilt top and I started cutting the pieces I needed for to make this quilt top bigger. So I did have some more of that solid blue and these squares were about six and a half by seven. They were not square pieces. They were more of a little bit of a rectangle. So I cut all of those and I worked around this quilt to get close to that size of that blanket that I'll be using. I used about three different blue plaids. I didn't have enough of any one of them, but this is a scrappy quilt, like most of my quilts on this channel. And I just worked around uh, border by border, sewing my squares together. Actually, again, they're not exactly square, but I sewed them all together in rows and I added them all around my quilt. As you can see, I am working on the floor and I'm thankful that I do have a floor big enough to put this quilt top down because it's less thinking and planning. I can just lay it out and kind of see what I'm doing as I go along. And I really like doing it in that fashion. It helps me visualize and to me it takes less time. Here it's kind of dark because I worked <laughs> until the sun went down and I finally got the quilt top ready to go. After pressing my quilt top, I got some backing prepared. I had to put two big pieces of fabric together for the backing and, and I just kind of centered everything again on my floor and then I took it to my dining room table and I started smoothing from one end to the other. Now I would really probably recommend doing this on the floor with some tape starting with that backing fabric tape the backing down and then ta tape the batting down on top of it smoothing everything as you go but i didn't want to work on the floor today my body just wasn't up to it so i started at one end of the quilt and i just smoothed it out as best i could and i worked from one end to the other and i pinned in every one of those squares.
that you might notice that I do a lot of smoothing as I go and that I think helps keep this quilt from puckering anywhere. After getting it all pinned, I trimmed around the quilt so I wouldn't have that excess blanket. So I left about a two inch edge all the way around. And this is what I did to quilt this heavy quilt using a blanket as my batting. I went to every corner and I did a little one and a half, two inch stitch back and forth three times to sort of tie this quilt. Instead of using ties and a needle, yarn and a needle, I used my machine. Sort of went diagonally through my quilt beginning at one side and just going straight down through all of those corner seams with a little machine stitching. had some little threads to cut but that was that was it um, I thought about going back through this quilt making sort of an X on every one of those little corners but I decided to just leave that one stitch I didn't want my um, quilt to have any little uh, puckers or the backing up puckers when I add my binding. So what I did is I gave myself a big stitch and then I went all the way around this quilt with a larger stitch and sort of basted the edge so before I put on my binding. After taking out these uh, basting pins, I went around and I trimmed off all the excess blanket and batting from my quilt. Thank you. 
And here's my binding cut two and a half inches. I made a very long piece of binding, putting the ends together and sewing a diagonal seam. Then I will press it in half and I will attach it to the back of my quilt and then I'll roll it over that raw edge and top stitch. I'm happy to be finishing this unconventional type quilt. It is a bit heavier and um, I think using a blanket as batting is not usually talked about, but I know that you can do it and the blankets aren't always heavier. So you kind of need to make your decision there what blanket to use. But I think um, using your machine to sort of tie the quilt is a great way to get this quilt all together, get it finished and give it to the family members and the people you know that really like that heavier type quilt. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you next time.